Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Astrid, I am Waterland Wool on Instagram and now on YouTube. So I wanted to show you a couple of really cool things I got in the mail recently and then I went shopping and I got some makeup stuff. So I know that this is mostly about knitting and my journey with that, but I wanted to show you because I just think it's so pretty and I want someone to appreciate it with me. So let's get started. I promised you in my last video that I wouldn't open anything uh, until I was right in front of you showing you what it is. So as I promised, I've got my Australia Post parcel and it's completely unopened. Uh, I can't, if I try and open it, there's nothing, nothing coming out. I haven't peeked, haven't even looked at it. Um, so I've got my trusty scissors and let's go. My voice is starting to crack because I've had my first week back at school. Um, and I'm talking a lot, like a whole lot. I forget how much um, energy and effort it takes to control a room of 30 kind of crazy teenagers. There's so much fun though. I really like this new school, but it's a lot of work. Okay, so excuse me if my voice goes in the middle of this. So this is from Tiny Toadstool Cottage. This is her Yarn of the Month subscription package uh, on banned books. So this is what they come in. They come in like a really beautiful bag and I like it because I get to collect these bags. And then I use them as notions bags because, or you know, for spend needles. And I was wrapping some Christmas presents in these as well because of recycling. So I think it's really pretty. Okay. Firstly, oh, this is so pretty. Okay. I'm going to make sure this, the light is getting in the right way. So this is, it looks like a greenish kind of a base with pink and purple and rusty kind of yellow speckles all the way through it. This reminds me of a really nice like spring day, spring flowers. And then the contrast is quite a, where are we? That's about accurate. Quite a dark purple. So putting these two together, you can see that purple it, like automatically picks up on the speckles and really brightens them. So without it, they're obvious, but they're not, you know, they're kind of a bit muted. And then you put it straight away with it and it really pops them out. So I quite like that. This is her Astri fingering. Uh, it's 100 grams over 400 meters. Um, it is 40% superwash wool, 20% 20, 20 polyamide and 40% super kid mohair. So it is so soft. I've got makeup on my face. I'm not going to rub it, but I might just put it on my chest and my shoulder and that feels really soft. So I'm quite a fan. I think this would be really good. Maybe neckwear, um, like a scarf, cowl, something like that. It's really soft on my hands. So even something, um, like middens. Um, and it's fingering, so it's really fine. So that would kind of trap in that warmth really well. As I say, in a hot day wearing a singlet because it's so warm. Okay, I'll just put that down there. So Jane always gives us tea as well. So we've got two kinds. This one is a wild raspberry hibiscus. And this one is peach. So I've tried this one before and I really like it. It's quite fresh and, again, quite summery. Um, so I think that these are going to be really, really nice. And I feel like they match that spring vibe that we've got going on in this package. And we've also got a little notebook, which is excellent because I need to have one with my knitting stuff. I always forget to bring one. So if I've got one already prepared, that is perfect. And it says, enjoy the little things which I like, especially with knitting, you know, slow fashion, you've got to enjoy it. It's kind of the point. Okay. So this one is, uh, smell the flowers. Oh, perfect. Spring. I kept saying that. Good on me. Well done me. Okay. So this is The Story of Ferdinand by Munro Leaf. 
The story of Ferdinand was published in 1936. Uh, it tells the story of the peace-loving bull Ferdinand who would rather quietly smell the flowers than fight in the bullfighting arena. So Jane always gives us like a page of information uh, about the book that she's based her dying on, which I really like because I love to read. And my book collection, while it is extensive, if I show you, there is books on books on books. Literally, this one here, I think, is four books deep or three books deep in the row. So I love books and I will read voraciously. Uh, I love, love, love. I've always got one in my handbag just, you know, sorry, city living. I've always got one in my handbag just in case. Um, but I don't have a very wide range of books that I like to read. I tend to read um, very singular young adult fiction. Um which is great as a high school teacher, but very limiting in other areas. So I really enjoy that these ones, they give me a bit of information and then I can reach out and I can read more or less um, and I can, yeah, widen and broaden my reading list. I was going to say vocabulary. My vocabulary vocabulary is okay when I can pronounce it. Um, yes, so this is our um, last, is it the last one? Let me read it. This is the last one, um, the last collection in the um, yarn of the month one by Jane, which is really sad. I'm actually, yeah, I'm quite sad at that. I didn't realise that you can see that I'm unboxing this in the moment in front of you because I didn't realise that this was the last one. And now I'm very sad and I kind of want to get up my phone and message her right now and just tell her I'm really sad that this is ending. So Jane, I hope you watch this and I hope you know that I'm very sad this is ending. So... The second one that she has offered, which I'm sure you show, saw a glimpse of, is based on James and the Giant Peach, uh, which I think is just one of her favourite books. Oh, wow. No, it has been banned. For its references to alcohol and tobacco, crude language, violence, encouraging children to disobey authority, advocating communism and mystical elements. Wow. Who would ban James the Giant Peach? One of the books banned most frequently between 1990 and 1999. It's about a boy and a big peach and some insects. Wow. All right. Even better because you get to learn more. Oh, did you know this? I did not. Okay, so the last one, which is based on James and the Giant Peach. Oh, okay, I love this. This is probably my favorite one that she's ever died. This is beautiful. So this one is if i take this off this little band around it as you can see it's got hot pink it's got kind of a softer red and speckles all through it i need to cast this on i don't know what it will be but this is going to have to be a project very 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 soon so this is on the sprite fingering uh which is 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon um, as I said before, I hate knitting socks, so this is not going to be a sock. Plus, I would hate the idea of putting this on my feet and hiding them in shoes. No, not okay. This is going to be neckwear of some kind, maybe a scarf, maybe a cowl. Uh, I'm thinking texture. Yes, okay, let me get back to you because this is going to be something amazing. I love this. Oh, this is so pretty. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. This is so good. I'm so excited. Okay, and lastly, with a little stitch marker, Jane has given a little flower. So it works with both uh, James and the Giant Peach. Where you, where's my face? There we go. Um, James and the Giant Peach and uh, the Spring Flowers, the Ferdinand, with the peace loving flower sniffing ball. So this works perfectly. Oh, thank you, Jane. I'm so appreciative. I absolutely love everything you've just dyed. This is beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so as I put these back on, I have not been knitting very much. I also haven't been very active on pretty much any kind of social media. Um, moving house has been really hard, uh, really full on, and starting this new job has just been wild. So I'm not new to teaching, but I am new to the school, and it's very different types of students. 
Um, I've never taught like this before. And so I'm finding that I'm really changing up my teaching style. So that's been taking all of my energy. Um, as you can tell, I'm a little bit more somber than I normally would be. I'm normally jumping around. Um, and my voice is going just because it's been so much energy, like putting out, um, expenditure. That's the word I'm looking for. So I do apologize if I'm too demure for you today. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's been a lot. And I've been finding that I needed to keep my energy up and go, go, go. And then I'm just going to crash and then go, go, go. And then crash. I haven't been able to relax and just knit. But the one thing I have finished off knitting, which I wanted to quickly show you was a swatch for my Paradise Singlet. So my Paradise Singlet is out in the front room and I won't grab it for this one because I think I've shown it to you in the last one and I'll show it to you again when I release it properly. But it is the yellow linen lace singlet um, based on butterflies and being in paradise, in a tropical paradise. So this one is the swatch. So I wanted to make sure that I had uh, all the measurements correct. Uh, as I said to you before, the eucalyptus one, I just... I felt awful that I'd screwed up basically. Um, and so this will be definitely test knitted, but I wanted to ensure that I had the lace correct, that no one's coming back to me worried about this. Uh, so this is the lace swatch um, just in a nitpicks. I don't even know what it is. Comfy maybe. Um, yeah. Comfy sounds right. And coral. Uh, so this is the swatch. As you can see, it's already got quite an A line. So this starts at 14 stitches per, um, stitch pattern, uh, sorry, 28 per stitch pattern. So it's 14 stitches per little cross, uh, but 28 overall. And then it goes down to 12 and then it goes down to pretty sure it's 10. So yeah, 11 and then 10. So it's really got that nice A line. I've knit it in the round just to make sure everything works out because that is exactly how you're going to be knitting it in the pattern. So if I put my hand in and just squish it all the way so you can see it all the way squished so I'm not just manipulating it. If I take it out, that's how it, that's how it sits. So it's already in that beautiful A-line pattern, which I'm really, I really like. So it's going to look really quite a decent shape on the body. Um yeah, so for over bathers or whatever I think it's really lovely and there's going to be an option if you want to increase it again to make it more of a longer I'm going to pass the butt uh so if it is going to be over bathers then you've kind of got that freedom and almost that dress style but again in that really distinctive lace so I hope that you like the pattern I absolutely love it the stitch oh, get out of the way <laughs> uh I think this stitch is just really stand out I think it's quite lovely yeah, so that's what I've been knitting. Uh, I know it's small, but it is quite, to be honest, this is quite a bit of brain power and quite a bit of work, this bottom bit. Once it gets up to about the bust, it's going to be quite simple stock in that and just easy decreases. But this bit does take a little bit more concentration. So that's what I've been knitting mostly because it's just been exhausting. But retail therapy always solves a problem, always. So my housemate and I, um, she and I went shopping today and we had to go stop by Priceline, uh, which is a makeup shop in, or like beauty makeup health store in Australia, Australia. And I found some discounted, uh, Christmas sale stuff. So I am quite cheap to be honest. I don't like buying full price things. Um, I would rather hunt for a bargain. So I found these ones and I wanted to quickly show them to you. I know, like I said before, it's makeup, but they're pretty and we all deserve beautiful things. So first up, I have this uh, bronzer highlight palette. So it is really beautiful if I open it up for you. So it's by a new to me brand called Revolution. Uh, Beth, my housemate, has heard about it before. Uh, I never have. So I decided to try some of it out. So I don't know if you can see, but that's it on my hand. Which way? Yes, that is the correct. Ooh, there's the light not reflecting. So that is the correct order. Uh, and I just think it is so beautiful. I put it on a little bit just over here. And I'm really, I'm feeling glitzy and glamoury. So it's making me feel quite bright and happy. Uh, it also came with this gloss, which I haven't tried yet, but you apparently 
it's a shimmer gloss. I don't know. I don't really get it. Um, I'm going to give it a go, but probably not when I have to look at people or people have to look at me um, because I'm going to, knowing myself, I'm going to put this all over my face somewhere and I'm going to end up looking like a human disco ball. So I'd rather try that in private and then maybe report back and see, tell you how I've gone. Either that or Beth might get it for a Christmas present next year. Okay, so then I also bought, and this is really cute. So these are little makeup palettes and they're in a chocolate uh, palette, which I think is really sweet. So these ones are a, the light, the white chocolate one is a uh, blush bronzer highlight palette, which are really soft and gentle. Um, the bronzer really suits my skin tone. And this one is like a golden punch to the face, but it's in such a good way and it's so bright and so friendly and I really like it. So this one here, which is called Praline. Um, again, this is all Revolution brand um, and yeah, it's quite beautiful. So I haven't tried that one yet, but we did stick our fingers in it and give it all a go. Um, then this one is the peanut butter one. So I don't know if you've ever tried peanut butter and chocolate. If you haven't, stop this video, go get some, try it, and then come back because it is so good. And I want to spread the word of ch chocolate and peanut butter. It is delicious. Either that or peanut butter and celery sticks. If you stick them in and eat them, um, I find that to be also quite delicious. So this one, they're shades based on peanut butter. Just take the little plastic out. Oh, hello. <laughs> so this one here, they are just reflecting my posters on my wall that are very badly put up. Um, they are a bit more orangey than I, I think I would like. Um, I don't tend to go for oranges. So this honey is quite sunflower yellow and quite bright. Um, and this pink, what's it called? Delish. Um, is delicious and it's quite happy looking. So I think this is going to be really fun to try out, but again, maybe in the um, safety of my own home before I have to go out anyway, just for now. And then lastly, I've got the red velvet to show you. Lastly for the makeup, I should say. I've got more. So these colours are based on red velvet. Oh, let's just post that up. There we go. It's not getting distracted by myself. Uh, so these ones here are, yeah, based on the red velvet. So as you can see, I've already dipped into some of them. So I don't know if you can tell. It is terribly put on. But on the edges, I've got this one, which is crumbs. It's actually a lot redder than I expected. I expected it to be a lot browner. Then baked is kind of in about here. And then blend is in the corners in here. Just as that light orange kind of pop and then I've got brown sugar as a gold uh just in the center you can probably see it actually you can see it sorry something guys you can see it better just there so I really like having a metallic in the middle there just to really brighten everything up um so I really had to test them out before I came and showed you all of them because I just think they're so pretty um so again these are by I love revolution or revolution um they are $20 Australian, down from $27 Australian. Um, and they also came with, sorry, I'm going blind. They also came with this little chocolate heart, which is, if you can see, a little bronzer. So I actually don't really wear bronzer. This is probably going to become um, like a, mis uh, a fat, an eyeshadow. Um, but I think it's really beautiful. Sorry, this is a highlighter. Let me get my words correct. This is a highlighter, but I still don't really wear many of them, especially not many bronze. Um, I tend to prefer pinks. So I think, again, this is going to become more of a regular eyeshadow just in the mornings as I go off to work. So I'm really excited about this. It's made me feel a lot better. Not any more awake, but I have nice things. They're pretty. So the last thing I wanted to show you today was my Knit Crate. So I've had a long history with Knit Crate. I've gotten some amazing things from them. Um couple of these actually are from Knit Crate that I can point up to up here. Um, I got the Pixie um, Metamorphosis 
from Micro. I've got two of these, and this is absolutely delightful. I've also got um, three of these spruce. So just, you know, really beautiful, new-to-me um, dyes, or as I'm so lucky. Oh, are you going to? There we go. Um, as I'm so lucky, I get some designers that I've been stalk uh, so I'm sorry, some dyers that I've been stalking on Instagram for so long, and then I managed to get them in a knit crate, and I'm so excited about them. So I'm quite fortunate that knit crate for me is like a doorway into another world because in Australia it is quite difficult. Shipping takes forever. Everything's really expensive because the Australian dollar compared to the American dollar is not strong. Um, and so, yeah, I find that Knit Crate is really good. However, I also find it to be kind of sucky in some ways. Um, the I've had a few problems with the customer service before um, where they've just taken so long to answer and the, the, the shipping times and, like I said, the cost as well. Sometimes it's just a bit difficult. So this is the January box. Um, it was shipped out apparently on the 10th of January and it's currently the 8th of February and I only got it about two days ago. So that's how to, how long it takes. It, it does take quite a while. So I will be showing you these probably after everyone else shows you theirs, but c'est la vie of an Australian, <laughs> really. So this one, I have, they give you different options. So you can go for um, Energize Me, which tends to be quite bright, um, you know, corals and oranges and neons. Then you can go for Chill Out, which is blues and um, that, yeah, greens, that really mellow kind of moody colors. And then they've also got Natural, which is, you know, as kind of in the name, those whites, browns, beiges. And then there's one called Surprise Me. And I never like to choose because I really love pinks and brights. And then I really love blues and calms. And I really love neutrals. Uh, and they're all mixed in around here. So I didn't want to uh, decide anything. So I thought I would just choose Surprise Me. And then I watch the videos and I always know which one I want to hope for. But I don't want to change because I just want to give it a go and see what happens. So this is me unboxing. Oh, there we go. I just saw what it is. I was going to say, this is me showing it to you for the first time. And as you can see on my, reflection, my reaction, I did not see it. So... Do, 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 do. This one looks like the Energize Me from Knit Crate in January in 2020. So, do, 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 do. let me put this on my lap so I don't like fly it around. Oh, I'm already losing stuff. Okay, so this is definitely the Energize Me which I must admit, I hoped I did not get. Uh, the chill out looked so beautiful and the Energize Me was kind of my least favorite. Um, but that is okay. So what I do with these, if I don't particularly like them or really want to use them, um, I tend to use them as swatches. So that's what the Comfy by the Knit Picks was. I bought it for some reason, some maybe, I just think I've just bought it um, and I didn't particularly like it or use it. So I decided to use it for swatches. So that is what I do with all my knit crate that I don't particularly like. Or if someone else that I know likes, likes it. Um, so maybe if I borrowing from uh, F This Knit podcast, I might have a mysterious boyfriendy type person. But I'm not going to talk about him too much because it's very early days and it might not go. But. If mysterious boyfriendy type person does decide that he really likes these colors, I might do a beanie for him, something like that. But I don't really tend to um, bemoan the loss of colors I don't like, which I think is obvious and normal for most people. So I don't, as I was saying before, I in a previous episode, they do have a D stash. Um, Nick Rake does have a D stash for swapping ones that if you don't like them uh, or selling them on or something like that. I, again, being in Australia, the shipping is so far, the cost of it is so much, it just doesn't really seem cost effective to me. Um, I don't know if they've updated it since I stopped and then restarted though. So I might have another look, but for now I doubt that I'm going to retry. Uh, I might just, yeah, swatch with it and just see what happens. So 
the from watching the video uh, from Nick Crate, this was designed by Boylan or oh, with Boylan Boylan Brook Brooklyn Brooklyn Boy Knits. There we go. Brooklyn Boy Knits in mind, and he had a hand in how he dyed everything. Um, and this yellow, I actually really like. So while I'm talking about not liking it, this one I quite enjoy. So this is kind of like a, a tonal kind of yellowy orange. Uh, it looks a lot more saturated on screen than it does in person. Uh, if I can, oh, there we go. That's a bit more accurate. So it is quite nice, actually. I'm not, not big on orange. I like yellow, but I'm not big on orange. So I do like it, but I don't know if I personally would wear it. Like if I do it as a beanie, I find it makes me look a little odd. I don't really like the color with me. Not, yeah, not as much. So this might be really good for someone else, maybe a, maybe my brother even. And then this one is meant to go with it. So, oh, it says Brooklyn Boy Knits on it. So you would think that I would remember that, but I haven't. So this one is Safari Sunset. And the first one that I showed you is Golden Lion. So Golden Lion's a win for me. Safari Sunset, no. I told you, you guys are going to get my real opinion. <laughs> so this one... Look, I just, it's orange and green and purple and yellow and I, and muddy. Like it, that green is really muddy. Um, I'm so sorry if you like this. It's just my personal opinion. If you, if, if you love it, let me know. And I might see if I can arrange for you to get it. Um, because it's not, it's just not me, but it is definitely someone else. That is why it is a color spectrum because there's a human spectrum and different people get different colors and it's great. Okay, it is great. It's just not an Astrid Spectrum color. <laughs> That's all. So I just I just find that that purple with that green with that orange is quite distracting for me and it doesn't it doesn't really mesh well in my brain at all. I would never wear this. I wouldn't look for it. I would probably walk the other way if I saw it together um in like a dress. It's just not my thing. So these two together, they are designed to go together. And I do have to say that put together, this one definitely tones down the garishness of this. Uh, so I think even a brioche uh, beanie or I keep going with beanies, brioche cow, brioche cow. Good Lord, I'm tired. I'm so sorry, guys. Brioche cow would be uh, quite nice with maybe even this in the background. It's just that pops to come through. I do think that might work quite nicely. Um... But yeah, I'm not particularly in love with this. I do have to admit. So this is the uh, catalog that comes with the uh, Nick Crate. So I do have to say I'm really glad they were doing um, physical ones. When I first joined, they were doing them online and you had to like log in and get... No, actually, I'm incorrect. They were doing cards and they had like physical cards of the patterns, but because they were smaller than A4, because this box is smaller than, I'm sorry, this box is smaller than an A4 size piece of paper, uh, a US envelope, I think it is. Um, so I found that I would lose them in my books. I would lose them. I would just put them somewhere and I didn't really uh, watch where they were. Then they stopped that because of environmental reasons, I think. Uh, and they decided to do it as online digital downloads. But then as well, because I got mine in February and everyone else got theirs in January. So then when I tried to log on and get my pattern, it was really difficult. But I like, I don't know about you, but I'm not the kind of person to sit there and in the middle of January and be like, oh, OK, I'm going to go log on and download this pattern. I would have to see if what yarn I got and then if it would match the pattern for me. And so it just I found it really difficult. So I'm really glad that they are giving you physical uh, catalogs now. I think that's a lot better. So read it like a child. <laughs> they've got, again, the contents and they've, oh, they've got the one on the, on the front. So a little bit about Brooklyn Boy Knits. I do think he is an absolute inspiration. I'm so glad that Nick Rate has reached out and done some work with him. I've just been seeing so much amazing things by him. Um, and the work that he does, especially with underprivileged youth and uh, with the depression, um, the blue beanie that he was doing with, I cannot remember for the life of me, the company, but I'll find out and post it down below. Um, just the stuff that he does. I think it's, he's got a really big heart and I'm really grateful that he's now getting that like international notoriety that he truly deserves. So these are the three that are uh, genuine crates. 
Um, this is the one that, yeah, I have. Um, I'm glad I didn't get this one though, because this one for me, again, I love, I love that neutral. That neutral to me sings. But then they've put that, just the orange. I'm not an orange person. I think you can tell. It's just, it pops out. It's odd. Um, but this chill out, if I can show you this way, that to me is just stunning. So a little bit of a sadness that I didn't get that, but that's okay. We will move on. I can't wait for next month's knit crate. And also, I do think that together, these are quite nice. Together. <laughs> okay, and then it tells about sock yarns and it tells you about the patterns. So I I know that they've designed for especially these patterns to be done together. I don't love the patterns this month. Um, I did get a little sneak of them um, in the video. I'm just not overly impressed. I don't think they're incredible. Um, but that's okay. Part of the fun of getting yarn is that you get to design your own patterns when you're a designer. So that's what I'm going to have to do with these ones. Um, and then they give you little like extras. And this is a tiny knit beanie. Now online on the forums, there's a lot of what the heck going on because of this. Um, and people were just like, I don't get it. Why would you do this? What is the point? It's not exactly like a needle topper because needles are way thinner than my finger. Um, it's just odd. Like it doesn't really make any sense. Um, it's a bit of whimsy, which I do like. So I love, you know, that fun kind of random. Um, but it is a bit weird. And I think there's like, if it related better to these, like if, um, this, cause it is a blue beanie. If it talked about what, what Brooklyn, Brooklyn boy knits is doing with those blue beanies, then that would connect in really well. Actually does it while I'm talking about it. Okay. So it mentions that it talks about the hat, not hate, but it doesn't mention the color of the hat, which would make way more sense being connected to this. So I get maybe if Nick right, if you think like I do, maybe you're going the way that I think you are, but it wasn't done well. So Nick Crate, if you're watching this, um, Rob or Hannah or her, Clem, I think was in the last video. Um, if you're watching this, hello. And maybe make your notions a little bit more obvious next time, I think would be a really good answer. Um, but it's cute. I dropped it before and my cat, so that was why I ducked down. Um, and my cat made a leap for it. So it might end up just being a really adorable cat toy that he's then going to destroy. Um, but I'm not, yeah, it's a bit... It's a little bit bizarre. There we go. <laughs> okay. Well, on that note, um, I think this is it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for all of your previous uh, beautiful comments that you guys have been leaving. Um, and next time I podcast, or oh, yes, podcast is is next time I vlog because podcast is only audio. So next time that I vlog, I promise I will have slept much better and I'll be way more awake for you. Uh, let me know what you would like to see more of, what you would like to see less of. If you don't like the makeup, that's totally fine. Um, and yeah, let me know. Have a great week or uh, two weeks and I will be with you soon. Bye. <laughs>